Oh, hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And Morris and Morris! As you saw from yesterday's episode, first of all, I just want to tell you, <laughs> that it's cold today, and I don't have any motivation to come out here and work on this stuff in the cold. Uh, I wanted to also tell you that some of you guys might have noticed at the bottom of my videos now on YouTube, you're gonna see some Mo Blow merch. T-shirts, glass, glasses, cups, mugs, with the Mowers and Blowers logo on it. I didn't promote it when I first started doing it, only because in the past four years since I started the channel, I've had subscribers ask me, hey Henry, when are you gonna have T-shirts and merch and all that stuff? And I said, uh, well, I probably won't do it until I get like 10,000 subscribers because I barely sell stickers as it is. You know what I mean? I mean, I've sold a lot of stickers, but <laughs> you can only go so far with stickers. You know what I mean? So uh, once I got over 10,000 subscribers, uh, I decided to use the two or three different suppliers that is recommended by YouTube. And one of them is the most popular one. It's called Teespring. So Teespring is another company. And what they do is they, they produce the merch for you. You just supply the logo. They'll put the logo on their merch and then promote it on YouTube for me. So I don't have to really do anything other than set it up, you know, which I did already. So uh, I didn't promote it because I wasn't sure about how the quality was gonna be, you know? But one of my biggest fans, Roger McDonald, he saw the listing and he ordered a t-shirt right away. And so I said, hey, tell me how the quality is before I start promoting it, right? If it's like crappy and stuff, I'm not gonna use them, you know? And so he emailed me with a picture and it showed the t-shirt that he bought with the mowers and blowers logo in the front and the thinner logo in the back. And he says, the t-shirt is great, it's soft, it's, it's good quality, and uh, the logo is screen printed and it looks great. And he showed me a picture. And so I said, oh, okay. So then I added another version t-shirt where it has the American flag uh, mowers and blowers sticker with the Dunsky sticker in the back. And then Roger McDonald's like, why did you add that? I wanted the Dunsky uh, t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, if you guys would like to help the, the channel and contribute in another way, get some Mo Blow merch. As you saw from yesterday's episode, uh, this snow blower would not roll because the chain and the uh, sprocket was filled with like compacted grease that had all dried up and hardened on there. So it was really difficult to move the chain. The chain was very rusted, so it was almost like seized into a shape, you know? And it wouldn't move. Each of the links had to be like grinded down and uh, oiled and lubricated and uh, you know moved around a lot so that it grinds away the rust around the joints and so now the, the chain moves freely so uh, while it didn't move before now it rolls as normal so I think we fixed the transmission uh, <laughs> we haven't tested it uh, so the owner of this thing told me that this thing runs and the only problem it had was the wheels wouldn't move so he had to take the pins out to roll it but if you take the pins out the wheel will fall off you know so I put the pins back in and uh, it now rolls freely. So I think we fixed that. This is a good snowblower. This is like $1,500 used, maybe. If it was in, it's in pretty good shape, you know? Uh, anyway, we don't know. I haven't done anything to the engine yet. Uh, I believe I checked the Earl. Did I check the Earl? Let me check the Earl. Uh, it, it could use an oil change. Maybe not. It looks okay for testing for now. Uh, and also it has no gas in it. So that's the only good thing is that there's no gas. If there's gas in here over the many years, God knows what, what is wrong with the carburetor. So we're just gonna test it. I have no idea if this engine runs. We're gonna put some gas in here, decent amount, because if it, I could always use it if this runs, use it for the upcoming winter, you know. I'm gonna want to try it in the snow for sure. Oh, I just put gas in it, and uh, there's a couple of drops of gas coming out of the fuel shutoff valve. So that 
will probably need to be changed. I've got my, uh, I need to get an extension for that. It's a triple prong, you know what I mean? Uh, so I'm gonna try the electric start to see if it works for the first time. It's still dripping, small drip, so I do need to change the uh, fuel shutoff. You guys think the electric start will work? Anyway, we've got full throttle, we've got choke. Let's prime it. And it sounds, it sounds normal. And look, it's dripping, so a fuel is being primed to the carburetor, which is good. Let's try the, uh, let's try the electric start. So how about that, huh? We did nothing to it but put gas in it, and it starts and runs. Uh, surges a little, right? Uh, but not as bad as the other one we did the other day. Uh, I lowered the throttle to idle, and it didn't stall, remained running, which means the carburetor is pretty clean, you know? But we do want to clean that, what? That's right, the pilot jet was the culprit of it surging. So I think we could probably get away with a quick and dirty. What do you think? You know what I mean? Because, I mean, <laughs> it runs even on, you know, so, uh, the lowest uh, throttle, which means that the carburetor is very clean, you know. Uh, there could be some buildup in that little tiny hole in the pilot jet, which causes the surging. Problem is, you'd have to remove the heater box to get to it. That's the problem. It's difficult to get to. And it looks like this heater box is 
attached underneath the gas tank. What a pain. Yeah. There's one thing I do want to fix first before I do that. Right over here, this turning thing, when you get to the forward part, it kind of binds. You have to get it over the hump. See? The side, the side is nice and smooth, but when the front part here just stops, it takes a little bit to get through. So I kind of want to take this cover off and see what the hell's going on under there. There's a little bit of a crack here too. Got three eighths here. Huh. That's interesting. <laughs> I don't really see what could be wrong. The teeth look good. It's right there. It kind of stops a little. see any reason why I wouldn't keep going. See? It's clean. There's nothing there that would prevent it. Unless this part here is too high. So if you lowered it, it would put less tension on it. Right? There is an adjustment there. That's right. Toolbox Buddy for my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. A little bit of lubrication there, along with there. Did a fine job. I just wanted to get that out of the way because it bothered me. Now I don't have to worry about it for the remainder of the day. You know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. Uh, I just found this on the ground. <laughs> I don't know where it's from. I have to go over this thing to figure out where this came from. Just gotta look. I didn't really secure that on there very tight, so now that we know it works, I'm gonna tighten these uh, pins. It's in place of a lynch pin. You got lynched! Because we had so much grease going on over there, I'm spraying the uh, friction disc, the wheel, the plate, with some uh, multi-purpose parts cleaner and degreaser to get any grease or oil off this disc because this disc is very important when it comes to the drive system. Uh, I just want to make sure that it's clean. while we're down here, of course. So it looks like uh, we're all set over here on this side. Um, so I can actually put the, uh, I could actually put the uh, plate back on. I'm gonna clean the plate, the plate's filled with crap on it. And then find some bolts to it, to put it on because there was no bolts that came with it. The plate was uh, missing. The plate was off of it. Just got to rotate this uh, disc so you can see it. There we go. That way you can get all the corners of it or the entire surface of the plate. Make sure it's clean and dry. It doesn't have any uh, burl. All right, so I'm going to go get the plate now. Put the plate on. 
Look at all this crap over here. Get this out of here. It's a good, it's a good snow blower. I'm just not looking forward to taking that uh, heater box off. It looks like it's going to be a pain. But we have to get the carburetor running smooth. Otherwise, I won't feel good either. This is the condition of the plate. Big crap here. Some uh, rust. This is like a pool. See, an area here. Of course, it's going to be rusted because any kind of moisture, rain, whatever, if you leave it outside, the rain will just sit here. Granted, there is a hole there, but I think a screw might have been in there. So it's no wonder this part is rusted out. I'll have to find a couple of bolts, see how this thing will uh, stick on there. Most of these snow blowers that you find on the street, they don't have the bottom cover anyway. It's always gone. Snow doesn't go upwards, so honestly, you don't really need it. I mean, unless you want to go spend $50 on it to go buy it, you don't really need it. But since I have it, I'm going to put it on. So it looks like this just... Uh And then two bolts right there. Boom! What do you think? Three eighths? Gotta find two three eighths. Can you believe it? One inch. There we go. Now the plate's on there. Now we gotta work on the carburetor. It's like I'm always working on a carburetor, man. Well, it is 90% of the culprits of uh, stuff that doesn't work. It's a carburetor. So I was gonna just do a quick and dirty, right? But I remember that the, the five horsepower and higher carburetors are really compacted in there with the fuel line in the way. So it's almost harder to do it through the bottom. I might as well just take off the carburetor the conventional way and do it right because it's just, just as much trouble to do it through a quick and dirty then the normal way so we're gonna have to figure out how to take the uh, heater box off I don't want to but I have to looks like they're quarter inch nuts one there two on this side front here where the camera's blocking right there hey that wasn't too bad it's not off yet Henry that's true take this knob off Ooh. oh huh. you know what that wasn't tough at all <laughs> There it is. There's a carburetor. That carburetor looks old, doesn't it? Uh, it's been in there a while. Yep, 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 yep. See how the fuel line is over here? Actually, if you're looking at this right, I see a carburetor that is not meant for this uh, machine. This carburetor has a 90 degree fuel angle, which means that this is for a five horsepower and under. This carburetor actually is too small for this uh, snow blower. What do you guys think? Should I, should I replace it with the correct one, which is the one with the straight nozzle that comes straight out, or should I leave it as be? Maybe I better leave it as be. How about this? We'll clean it first and see how it runs, and then if it doesn't run right, then we'll replace it. Because I, I personally don't think this is the right carburetor for this. And actually, the fuel shut off. 
is no longer leaking. <laughs> it's weird, you know? It was leaking when I put gas in it, but now it's not leaking anymore. You know what I think is that um, when gas touches rubber, right, it uh, swells it. So I think whatever rubber gasket that's inside the fuel shutoff assembly is now um, inflating whatever gas it is and stopping the leak. So listen, I'm just going to take this uh, bowl jet out clean it up it's it's hard because the fuel line is in the way I could take the fuel line off but uh, I don't want to ruin something that's good you know what I mean so let's take this bowl off See, this fuel line is in the way man and as you can see it's clean see that it's very clean I shut the fuel off so it shouldn't be dripping anymore. That That's a clean uh, bowl right there. So this has been serviced regularly. I mean, it it's spotless, pretty much. Other than the fact that it has this stuff there. But you know what? Sometimes when you remove this stuff, it'll leak because the gasket has created grooves. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to put this back the way it was. <laughs> Because there ain't nothing wrong with it. Uh, I'm going to blow that out a little bit anyway. Cleaning it out. Blowing up the emulsion. I mean, the carburetor's clean. It ran. It ran just fine. Except for a little surging, but you know what? I think we can get access to the uh, rum a rum a mum. Rum a bump bump. Rum a bump bump. Let me clean up this bowl a little bit and this jet nut. Here's the jet nut, and it is clear. You can see through it. But then there's that small one. Small one right there. And as you can see, that's clear because it's spraying into you. This hole here needs to be cleaned and it goes all the way through. And then there's this one that a lot of people forget. Super tiny that is drilled diagonally downwards. Or like they say in Canada, downwards. And as you can see, can you see? Actually, I can't even see, but it's going all the way in. There we go. You do, you can't see it. There we go. So this hole is clear. That hole and this hole is clear. The nut back on, tightening the bolt, half inch, doing a quarter turn at a time. I can't see it, so I'm just feeling for it. It's brass, so don't turn it too tight. Just like that. So that's cleared. What I mean by cleared is that we've gotten that off the list. Uh, so here is the location of the pilot jet. There's this black plastic thing that's about to fall off anyway. It's a couple of dogs walking by the house. Of course, you guys know my dog is a nut, so barking like a madman. And we are able to access the pilot, the fixed pilot jet screw. And there it goes right there. The trick is this hole right there. That's the trick. We're going to spray some carb cleaner in the hole here. I'm bending the straw.
It's okay if I flood it. No matter what's cleaning it, you know? Uh, let me get some uh, wires. So with this pilot jet, a regular twisty tie for a bread uh, bag works, right? For this one, this was clear anyway, right? I could see that from spraying, there was stream coming out of the, the hole here. But if you really wanted to clean it, get your uh, bristle brush thing. I might have to take my glasses off for this because I'm nearsighted. There we go. See that? That little uh, bristle here fits in there because a the regular pin is still too fat for that hole. That tells you how small that hole is, you know? So as long as you got it through there. That's good. It's a dirty job. It's cold. But you got to get it done, right? So I'm going to put my finger across the, uh, blocking the other part of the hole. See if it shoots up the top. See that? It does. That's the amount of mist that comes out of that one. So it is important. I'm gonna put this jet back in there. And this is a fixed jet, meaning that there's no spring on it, so you just screw it in until you can't screw anymore. <laughs> Isn't that what we all do? We just screw until we can't go anymore. I never said it was a PG show. And you can put this plastic cap back on if you want to. Since I have it, I might as well just put it on. Doesn't do anything anyway. Alright, let's uh let's start her up and see if it runs better. If not, we might have to change a carburetor because I honestly don't think this is the right carburetor because of the 90 degree angle to the fuel nozzle. With this being an 11 horsepower engine, it's got to have the straight nozzle for the right fuel uh, because the hole in the jet is drilled out bigger to accommodate the amount of fuel and horsepower for this one. This is for like a 5 horsepower engine. So we'll put the choke on, throttle up, give it a pull. Probably flooded because there's so, so much fuel that I blew in there.
absolutely beautiful. The pilot jet fix always fixes the surge. And I was wrong. Even though I think that's a five horsepower uh, carburetor, as you can clearly see, it runs absolutely perfect. So my theory on the 90 degree angle is flawed. I always thought that anything over five horsepower, you need the carburetor that has the single straight shaft. This proves me wrong, unless over the years, the hole naturally got bigger on its own, which is why it runs fine. Sweet. Here we go. You guys can see, I shined her up a little with some super clean. Looks really nice now. I'm gonna try and take some pictures of it. I'm gonna try to list it for 1200. So I just cleaned it up, took some pictures of it so I can list it for 1200 So there you go, episode two. Finally got my Arians 1128 fixed perfectly. Uh, we loosened up the rusted uh, chain and gears so that it rolls smoothly now. Uh, cleaned out the carburetor. I had to do some adjustments on the bottom there. Uh, the pan, it was pushed in so much that the transmission lever was hitting it. 
So I had to kind of bend it out a little bit more. It was a little discombobulated as they normally are. So once I got that worked out, it shifts, uh, the transmission shifts reverse and forward, no problem. It wasn't catching because that bar was catching on the pan, you know. Uh, it cleaned up pretty nice, you know. Orange always does. It just cleans up really nice. The uh, paint pretty good, so uh, just super clean all over it. Wiped down. Uh, wheels, while I thought looked rusted, surface rust on the wheels, it wasn't. It was just dirt. So some super clean on there, wiped right off. The wheels look like brand new, you know. So I took a few pictures of it and I was thinking, you know, 1275. That 75 will be like, because look, it has all the knobs and everything. And it's, everything works perfectly. And I know that these Tecumseh engines that are 11 horsepower or higher, even the 13 ones, that's big money. Five to $700 for that engine. That's, that's what I heard. Uh, but, you know, I'll put it out there for $12.75 and, and uh, see what happens. I mean, we are in the season for it. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it could snow any day now. A uh, big snowstorm coming. You want an Aaron's. Eleven <laughs> twenty-eight is no joke. Plus, it has a headlight. It works just fine, too, you know? Uh, anyway, uh, thanks to Quinn the Mailman for giving me the tip on scoring this thing. It really didn't take all that long, but two episodes. Thanks a lot for joining me on this snowblower video. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Mowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.